Hey everyone, BB here. Happy first, first day of fall. Looks like I don't have a body, but I have my robe on, and my robe is dark blue or navy blue, whatever type of shade of blue you want to call this. But being that it's the first day of fall, and I'm a little cold, I have my slippers, my comfy pajamas on, and my robe because. I am a wee bit chilly. Like, I woke up today, I just finished my snack, my morning snack. I had some Oreos and milk. Um, after this, I'll probably see what time I'm done filming this, and then I might have lunch. Um, but when I, uh, was eating breakfast, I didn't have my robe or slippers on. And it's like, you know, it's cold enough, I think it's that time of year again. I get the robe and the slippers out. Um, because it is pretty cold. So I was trying to figure out what can I talk about. Because I'm, to be honest, kind of out of ideas and kind of out of stories. I was trying to debate for the past couple days what to talk about on YouTube. Because it's been a while since I've done something. So I figured I could talk about two things. I can either talk about... My grandma and her Halloween decorations. I can talk about the snow. Now the snow is yes one thing I can talk about. Being from one. Being from Chicago. And two. Sadly being that that's only like two. Three months away. And in Illinois. And the part of Illinois that we're from. Or all over Illinois I guess. You kind of never know. When the snow is going to come. To be honest. We all pray. That it comes at least to like the week after Thanksgiving. And not how October, you never know. Sometimes it may, we have had snow in October. Now, thankfully, all the times that we've had snow in October, it's just like a blanket. It's just like a, like a, um, like a sparkling, and not sparkling, like a, um, what's the word? Like a coat, I guess. So by the time it, it lands, it melts. So like one day it might snow and the next day it might be melted, if you know what I mean. But anyways, um, so I figured, you know, how about I just talk about my grandma, to be honest. And maybe next vlog I'll talk about the snow and what my opinion and stuff about the snow. My opinion about the snow. It's Halloween. Um. Before my grandma passed away, and when I mean aunt, grandma, I mean my Oma. My Oma, before I started helping my Oma by Halloween decorations, my Oma, so my mom's mom, probably only had like maybe three or four Halloween decorations, in all honesty. She had a few pumpkin things, she had like a pumpkin that you would put over a candle and then she had another pumpkin that had a light in it that you would just switch on and off and the light would turn on and she had like a few other things and one year when I got old enough you know I was like and this was probably like maybe five years ago when I had a job I was like you know what it does doesn't feel like Halloween in my Oma's house so I'm gonna be a nice granddaughter because I love my Oma I love her very much. I still do. She may be gone. Just like Baxter, they may be gone. But I still love them very much. And I miss them to death. Like, I really do miss them. But they're together again in heaven. That's all that matters, I guess. Anyways. um, And I had the job and I had money. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy Halloween decorations for my Oma. Now, when I had a job, my first job was realistically technically staking shape. Now, I did work at the school for a little bit, making pots for uh, machines that clean stuff. I was making pots for the machine. And what the pots did was they went to machines that would clean, like, big buildings, like floors and walls and... There were big machines that cleaned big buildings and stuff. Heavy duty, big machine cleaner things. And I would make pots for them. I would put like screws and bolts and stuff together. 
so realistically, my first job or jobs was jobs around the school. I made pots for a machine. I worked at the school um, snack bar. I delivered milk. I stamped letters. There were times where I would go like this and stamp stuff. Um, I did a few jobs around the school. That was my first technically paying job. Um, realistically, my first job, job, I would say would probably be like steak and shake. And that was because my school actually helped me get it. Because I, um, had this lady that was like a job hunter lady. I don't know what her title was, but she helped kids at my school. She helped them find jobs and get jobs and learn what a job is and what you do at a job and how you act and all that stuff at a job. You know what I mean? So my realistically kind of first slash second third job, depending on how you want to look at it. If you want to consider being my school being a first job, Oh, it's Steak and Shake, because I both got paid. It's one thing if I didn't get paid at school. Then I would say, yeah, Steak and Shake was my technically first job, but I got paid at school. And trust me, I'm a person where if I'm going to be working, I best be getting paid. <laughs> Especially if you're not family. If you're family or if you're a friend and you want me to work for you, well, also going to depend on, like, what you're doing. Like, if you're a family or you're a friend and you're... You know, I work at you in an office or a building, then that's one thing. Like, if my dad's my boss or something, or my uncle's my boss or something, I don't know. But anyways, so working at Steak and Shake, I got paid eight twenty-five an hour. At Patillo's, I got paid eleven fifty an hour. Eleven twenty-five an hour, I forget. So between the two jobs. Steak and Shake, I worked at Steak and Shake for like four years. Four and a half years I worked at Steak and Shake. I was there a very long time. And some people may say four years is not a very long time, especially in fast food. But to me it was. You know, working at Steak and Shake for four years was a long time. Now, I know some people compared to me were probably only there a year. Maybe only there like ten years compared to me. Four years was a long time to be at one place, but you know, it was fun because I had friends. I had a few friends at Steak and Shake. Now, after I left Steak and Shake, we kind of went our separate ways. We kind of really haven't really talked. The one true friend I had there, I'm still friends with her, but it's more of like a Facebook friend now. You know, we were always like, oh, we're going to hang out, we're going to do stuff, but we, we never did outside of Steak and Shake, to be honest. Um,. But she was a good friend. She looked out for me at my job and stay at Steak and Shake. Um, she's still my friend, but we kind of really have never talked. I think prior to Steak and Shake six, seven years ago, because it's been like eight years probably since I worked at Steak and Shake. Um, I think we've only talked like once or twice, to be honest, on Facebook. <laughs> Anyways, um, and she was the only friend I had. I had a few friends there. Maybe acquaintance. I don't know. It depends. I know I could call Angela f a friend, but I don't know about any anybody else. Anyways, um, but between the two places, I got money. You know, they would give me money from time to time, obviously, because I would not be there. Trust me, if I was getting paid, <laughs> was it getting paid? Um, because there were a lot of times where they'll be like, "What are you doing here?" And I'm like, "I'm working." And they're like, "Oh, you're working today?" And I'm just like, "Yeah." Trust me, I want to come in if I wasn't working. And if I wasn't getting paid, I would not be here. Trust me. You know, trust me, I would not be getting, I would not be here if I was on the clock or if I wasn't getting paid. So anyways, between the two places, I had money saved up. And I would go out to the stores and I would buy my grandma. I would buy my grandma, sorry, if you see my dad's pile of clothes. Um... I would buy my grandma stuff, you know, and try not to film the pile of clothes. It's just white t-shirts of my dad. Um, it's not like his underwear or anything. Don't think it is. This is white t-shirts because he has a lot of white t-shirts. Um, but anyways, uh, let me try not to film them. Um, 
stupid eyes make. Uh, so I would go out and I would go to the cheap places. Like, I loved my grandma, Oma, obviously. I loved her. And there were a few times where for Halloween I would go to Spirit. And I got her a few things at Spirit. But a lot of it was cheap hang-up stuff on the walls or windows. Because Spirit can be one of the expens more expensive place to get Halloween decorations. If you know what I mean. It can be more on the expensive side. I will tell you a lot. Like 90% of the stuff I got from, from my Oma was from Goodwill. Dollar Tree. Dollar General. Garage sales from our house because I gave her a lot of stuff from our house. Not a lot of stuff, but a few things. Um, a lot of things we I gave her from our house. We ran out of room. We didn't really have anywhere to put it anymore. So throughout the years, like not throughout the maybe four or five years that I would decorate for my grandma, every year I always would buy more stuff and she would always yell at me, "Oh, honey, go." Why are you buying me stuff? You don't need to buy me stuff. I don't need any more crap. And my grandma was old-fashioned. And when she got confused and she got flustered, she would always scratch the back of her head. That's how we knew she was confused or flustered because she would scratch the back of her head. And I'm like, Grandma's really no problem. This stuff is, like, cheap. And she's like, oh, so I'm cheap. It's like, no, it's just... You don't want that stuff anyway, so why does it matter? If it's cheap or if it's expensive. You're not paying and you don't want it anyways. Well, I guess. So. Every year. And she liked it. I know, honestly, she would get a little frustrated sometimes. But she liked decorating. She liked when I came over to put up the stuff. Um, every year she would always be like, I'm going to call you when I want you to come over to decorate. She said, I don't want you here too soon. But I don't want you here too late. And my Oma would always call me and say, hey, can you come over today or come over to Mount to put up the stuff? And I'd be like, yeah, I can come over whenever you want. Now, my grandma was normally the person to do it like, normally like the last week to the first week of October. What my family do, we normally put it up the first week of October to the second last week of September is normally when we do it. I don't know when we're personally going to be putting up the decorations this year. Um, I wanted to try to do it this week. But um, this week was a little busy because we had a lot of rain. And you can't obviously put stuff on in, up in, on, in the ground if the grass is wet. You can't also do it if it's frozen. That's why my dad always likes to do it before a particular time. Because we put up a cemetery when he actually sticks stuff in the ground. He said, you got to do it before the ground freezes. And he said, say, it's cold on Halloween and the ground is frozen. He said, you can't obviously put st and stick stuff on in the ground if the ground is frozen. So we normally try to do it before a specific time. So in case it does freeze. Um, and some years it does. But normally my family, we normally do it like the first week of October to like the last week of September. Um... I don't know if we're going to be able to do it this week just because I have a few things going on this week. And plus, I'm leaving for Springfield on Saturday. Um, so, we'll have to see. It normally takes m me and my dad. It normally takes us about maybe three, maybe four days to put stuff up. Um, I'm normally putting stuff up every day until Halloween. I'll put something up here and there. Um, for example, the hay, like we got stuff, we, we always put up a hay bale in the, by the front door. And behind that, we put the fog machine and the strobe light. And on the hay bale, we normally, I normally put little pieces of decorations here and there. Like I'll put some fake fingers. I normally get fake fingers from Spirit. Some years I have to buy new ones. Some years I can find the old ones from last year. And it's fake plastic fingers. And I stick them in the hay. Um, I got a few things I put on the hay. Like I said, I'll obviously try my best to show you. Um, my decorations. Last year was a... It's a little tricky last year. Because last year was the first Halloween... 
without my Oma, without my grandma. And we were very busy last Halloween. So last Halloween, we didn't put up a lot of Halloween decorations. Like, we had the cemetery put up. We had a few things here and there, but... For example, last year, we didn't even get hay. We didn't get pumpkins. We didn't get hay. We didn't get pumpkins, and we didn't get corn. We normally get hay, pumpkins, and corn. And we didn't even get that last year. Um, I want to say we put maybe 40% of the decorations up last year. We we didn't really put that much up last year. Now, as you know, a lot of it is my dad. You know, a lot of it's heavy lit. I'm sorry if I keep showing you my dad's white t-shirts. I'm not trying to film it. Um, a lot of it is my dad. Like, obviously I'll help him. You know, like my Oma, like when I when I was at my Oma's, a lot of it was me putting up the stuff and my Oma would help me put up something from time to time. Or here and there, if it was lightweight, she would help me put it up or decide where it went. So it's not like my grandma did completely nothing. It's not like obviously I made her do it because it's like, it's your house, it's your decorations. I just bought them here, you put them up. Obviously, I'm not going to let my 80-year-old grandma do that. Um, so I helped her for up to four years. Um, so, like, a lot of times with my dad is heavy lifting and pounding and hammering and screwing and nailing and whatever you call it, how you hang the stuff up. And a lot of times I'm pretty much pointing to him, no, I want it there. Over here? No, oh, there. Okay, there, where? I was like, to the left of a little, okay? I was like, no, that's too much. And he's like, he's like, how far over? And it's like, dad. Tilt it a little bit. You want me to turn it upside down? It's like, no, just tilt it. What do you mean tilt it? You mean cockeyed? And it's like, eh. You know, so it's actually kind of funny trying to put up decorations sometimes with him. I mean, I do help. Like I said, it's not that I just sit there. But, like, I do help him obviously put up stuff. But a lot of times it's it's mostly him. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I, um... But it's funny because every year I would always go to my Oma's and I would help her put up the decorations and this year it's going to technically be my first year, it's going to be our first Halloween without my dog, Baxter. Last year it was Oma, it was Oma's first Halloween without Oma and now this, this year it's going to be Baxter's first Halloween without him in heaven. And it's kind of upsetting because last year we didn't put everything up. You know, we didn't put anything up. Well, we put stuff up last year, but barely anything. And we always had a tradition that Baxter would come out with us, with me and Grandpa. And I would tie him up to the, like, the light pole tree. Um, so he wouldn't run away. Because we would put his leash on. And he would normally sit down on the grass. Let the wind blow in his face. Love that. And irritate Grandpa. And bark at the kids that came home from school. And... He would always come out with us to help put up the decorations. Not that he could use his pods, but you get the point. He would just always come out with us. Um, so it's kind of going to um, be a little hard not to have him out there this year. And we put up the decorations, you know. Dang. My hands are shaking because my phone. I'm holding my phone up and it's heavy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I miss him. Now, I looked at it like, it upset me that last year we didn't put up everything. Because we knew last year was just gonna be, probably going to be his last year. Now, obviously, you didn't know for a fact. But you kind of could guess. Last year was probably his last year. Obviously, because he's gone now. But, like... We would say that, you know, like, we've been saying that for, like, the past five years, that, oh, this year may be his last year, and maybe his last Christmas, and maybe his last Halloween, and he would always surprise us, and he would go a year longer. He did that for, like, five years until he kind of just said, you know, it's been five years, we should have stopped saying that it's his last year, because we've been saying that for the past five years, and it hasn't happened, you know, so we kind of just stopped saying that. And then obviously, you know, every every living thing has to die. Even it. Even it has to die. Um, clown, I mean. So. 
it's part of life that really that really really sucks really sucks that everyone has to die every living thing has to die you know but uh you know it's funny because whenever we would go and decorate at my grandma's Every inch of her house would be decorated for Halloween. Like, every inch. She looked everywhere. Every nook and cranny. And it would have some decoration up. And then after Halloween, he took everything down. We took everything down, and it was pretty much naked. I hated that. Because you get used to it after a while. But, like, you take the decorations down, and it's like, Ew, your house is naked. And my grandma was like, I beg for differ. And it's like, no, I'm just saying. Because... Halloween decorations popped up the place, it brightened up the place, you know, it gave it spirit, it gave it joy. And, and so you take the stuff down, Christmas stuff too, and then I was like, it was back to normal, it's naked kind of almost, because you put so much stuff up, you know. Um, and I hate that last year, you know, we didn't put up every single decoration. Because I really wish Paxton would have saw it. I really wish he would have been there to see one more year of the hay, of the fog machines, of the strobe. My mom said, he's just a dog. He's not going to understand. He's not going to know better. And it's like, I know that he's just a dog. And he probably did not know better. Or he probably could care less if we had every decoration up or not. But still, it's like, that's not the point. The point is... I knew it was his last Halloween. I really wanted the decorations up. I mean, decoration up. I really wanted to try to make it special, but I didn't. And it kind of upsets me, to be honest. So. I don't know. So then, you know, my grandma passed away. And my sister and my mom were like, great, well, what are we going to do with Grandma's Halloween decorations? And I was like, well, I can go through them and I can see what we can put up at our house. Even though, like I said, you know, we don't have any more room for stuff, to be honest. The last couple of years, I've actually had to fight back getting stuff because, like, if I get something now... In order to get it, I have to know that I have a place for it. Because before I was like, oh, I can get this, get this. And my mom and dad would be like, well, where are you going to put it? And it's like, I'll find somewhere. And mom and dad are like, now when I buy something, I have to be like, well, I have to know exactly where I'm going to put it in order to buy it. I have to tell them, oh, I'm going to put it there. And they got to think about where I'm talking about. And they'll be like, okay, that will work. You know, so... A lot of my Oma's decorations... From her house 90 percent of the stuff went to my sister's place in springfield i went to my sister's place in college because it's like we would take it but we just got no room for it and 90 percent of the stuff that my oma had was indoor stuff and at my house we don't really decorate the inside of the house to be honest i think we decorate a few things here and they're like we'll put some like fancy napkins up in the kitchen or some towels and We'll put some soap up that looks like pumpkins. and But, like, when it comes to decorating inside, it's not really a thing in my house. We primarily focus on the outside. And a lot of my Oma stuff was inside stuff. So it went to my sister in college or in Springfield now. And her first day she put my Oma stuff up was in her house in college. Her last, last senior year in college. Her last year in college. College. She was in the house, and the house was a nice, okay, spooky kind of house, if you know what I mean. Um, but, like, she put the stuff up in her house in college her last year, and it was, it was happy, but it was also kind of sad because, you know, um, seeing my Oma stuff, you know, you kind of expect to see Oma. You know, you expect for her to be there. It's like when my grandpa passed away. I will admit. When my grandpa passed away six, seven years ago. The 
first couple days to the first week of him being gone, I really didn't want to set foot in the house. I was scared to almost. So it's like, if I go in the house, I expect to see him. I expect to see my grandpa. I expect to hear him. I expect to talk to him. Now that I'm stepping in the house and he's not going to be there, is You know, it was difficult at first. I mean, obviously I had seven years to get over it. And I did. About a month or two after he passed, I... Slowly after the two months of him passing, I kind of got more used to going in his house. And the last couple of years of my almost life, I even stayed the night at my almost house. I even did it more when I did. I stayed the night at my almost house more than I used to do it when my opa was around. Because my almost fort was for a, you know, she was Snooky's height. And I don't want to say she was skinny, but I don't want to say she was. Heavy, you know, overweight, overweight, you know. But like we looked at it, like every time we would hear that a prisoner escaped from like Cook County Jail, or like escaped or something, or like there was a burglar, bad guy on the loose or something, I would always be like, you know, I'm gonna spend a few days at Oma's house, you know, just to watch out for her. <laughs> like three years ago, um, there was a robbery. Someone broke into a house, four houses down from my grandma's. Pretty much what happened is the kids were sleeping on the couch. Someone crawled through the window, had the kids at gunpoint, said, give me your phones. Don't make a sound or I'll kill you. Took the kids' phones, went through the house. And, uh, like, the next day I pull up to my grandma's driveway and I see the cops all over. And I'm like, I go up to one of the cops. I, I, I kind of somewhat knew. I just knew him as a cop, you know. He was... He knew my dad. Anyways. He's like, what's going on? And I said, I have a grandma that's 80, 86. How old, however old my grandma was at the time. And I was like, I need to know what's going on. He can tell me, obviously. And he's like, oh, well. Someone crawled through a window, held the kids up at gunpoint. Made the kids give him his, their phone. And he took some stuff out of the house. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'm going to be... Doing a typical couple days, staying, staying a couple nights at my grandma's house, you know. So, a lot of times when I went over there and I stayed the night, it was to protect her, it was to look out for her, to keep her company, you know. And I loved it. You know, that was the house where I started eating Popeyes. Um, you know, my grandma was kind of to herself. Even when I went there and stayed at night, she would always be in one room and I would be in the other because me and her watched two opposite things. She watched this TV show, I watched that TV show. From time to time, I would go over there and I would watch movies with, with her and I would bring her a movie to watch. And we would sit down in the living room and we would watch the movie on high blast because she was deaf and she couldn't really hear. She wasn't deaf, but she was had hearing aids, you know. I remember when I go for my police ride-alongs and this is another thing that's going to be hard is the last four, three years two or three years I always try to go on police ride-alongs in May because of my birthday I always try to go in October because of Halloween in, the, in October, like the last two years, two or three years, like last year, for example, I had four ride-alongs in October. This year, I technically have two. I have one in Elgin on Halloween, and I have one in Washington Springs. I possibly have one more coming, even though they technically haven't called me back. So I'm kind of waiting for them to call me back because I already filled out the application. So the past three years, I've had like four ride-alongs in October. So each and every year, I would make the police departments I would go to. 
being October, um, depending on the year, like if I would go on a ride along in May, my Oma and I would make a rum cake. My grandma would make a rum cake for the police department. I would go and help her make it, even though my Oma was old fashioned. And she did two things when it came to making food or baking. She had to do it. She had to do it her way. And she had to sit up. She could never sit down and make food or bake. She always had to stand. Um, so I would go over there and help her make the rum cake. And I would normally buy the ingredients. She always had eggs. She always had jello. And she always had rum. So pretty much the only thing I had to buy was the cake. Sometimes I would have to buy nuts. Because sometimes she was out of nuts. But she normally said, I got I got the rum. I got the jello. I got the nuts. Let's bring the cake mix. Like I said, sometimes I would have to bring the nuts too, but I would go over there and see would make it. And I would help her. Obviously, I wouldn't just sit there. Um, but in October, I always make I always make cupcakes. Pillsbury Halloween themed cupcakes. And a few years ago, I was making them. And she's like, you know, instead of adding water, she said, you said they had apple cider. And I was like, that's a good idea. You know, because water and apple cider is kind of the same can consistency you know it's kind of the same anyways so it's gonna be hard not being able to go there this year to her house and and make it we still own the house the house is still in my mom and my aunt Jill's name just try not to go there I'm not gonna explain why but has to do with my cousins. Kind of get what I mean. They kind of taking over the house. You know, doing it the best way. You know, it doesn't. For example, when you walk into my grandma's house and you look around and it's like you can't even see the dining room table. There's an ant's nest in a sink, and it doesn't even smell like my grandma's house. It smells dirty and bad. Like I walked in there a few days ago, and I was like. Smell like Oma's house. I'm not gonna go into any more detail on that because I really don't like to talk about it because it upsets me. But I try to avoid going to her house because of them. Anyways, um, so it's gonna be really hard this year, not being able to go there and uh, make cupcakes. You know, it's going to be hard this year not having Baxter. You know, for one whole year, for one, almost one whole year, I knew I could come home to Baxter. After Oma died. After my Oma died, I knew I had Baxter. I knew I obviously had family. I had my mom, my dad, my sister, but, like, I knew I had Baxter. I knew Baxter wasn't going to complain. He wasn't going to ignore me. He was going to. Listen to me. Probably not understand what the heck I was saying, but. I know, uh. My boy was gonna be there for me. You know, because he was my boy. He was my boy. He was my good boy. And I could cuddle with him all I wanted. Even though, to be honest, he would only let you cuddle for a couple of minutes. And then he had to get up. Oh, he started to get up. And I would be like, nope, nope, lay down. I'm getting up. I'll get up. I'll go back on the couch. You just lay down here. It's so hairy. It's soft and fuzzy. And I like to cuddle. But I don't want to say he wasn't a cuddle bug. But it didn't last very long. Um, I'm kind of sitting downstairs and I'm looking at a Christmas tree that we had set up last year. Last year we put up a Christmas tree but we put up a little small like um two foot of tree. It's a two foot of tree that like a tree that you would put on like a desk. And that was our Christmas tree that we put up last year and I'm I'm kind of looking at it and thinking god he tried to go into the bathroom on it. My dog only tried to go to the bathroom on a Christmas tree once or twice. My my dog really didn't think it was a real tree. 
he knew it was a fake tree. Like I said, he tried it once or twice. Actually, it was kind of funny. Each year, he would always do two things. He loved to lay under the Christmas tree. Like, I don't know why, but he would crawl under the Christmas tree and lay under a fake Christmas tree. And two, being the amount of hair that he had, and being that our house is covered in carpet besides the kitchen, friction, and the amount of hair he had, he would go to the Christmas tree very slowly. Put my hands to the Christmas tree. This is his nose. He would go up like this. Get shocked. Go like that. He knew he was going to get shocked. He knew I'm going to get shocked. But I'm going to go slow. So I know it's going to happen. I don't know how close I have to get. But I know I'm going to get shocked. It's like, why do you do it if you know it's going to happen, you four-legged wookie? God, I'm killed to see that. Just looking at the Christmas stuff, and, um... Um... Let's see, what is it? September? been four months four to five months god since he's been gone because we put him down in the middle of our uh, in the middle of um <sighs> we put him down uh the day before easter And the, the day before Easter, we put my dog down. Worst feeling ever, man. Not tell you how hard it is. You know it's the right thing to do. Because of humanity, I guess. And dog manity. You know you have to do it. You know you can't let him suffer. You know it's the right thing to do. But sometimes the right thing to do. And the thing that you have to do. Is not the easiest to do. And doesn't mean it won't hurt. I think of him. Obviously every single day. Just like I think of my own grandparents. Just about every day. <laughs> but um. It's gotten easier obviously. It gets easier. But obviously it's something that you never have to forget. 